MCAT 2017 CRAM Biochemical and Biological Foundations of Living Systems Passage 14 Follicular Lymphoma BCL2 and Cell Growth As you view the reading of the passage, you'll notice some highlighted snippets of text. What I want you to do is garner meaning from these specific selections in order to answer the questions that follow. The passage is extremely manageable, so good luck and happy reading. Paragraph 1. Follicular lymphoma is a blood cancer where B cells have an unusually long lifespan, much longer than that of normal B cells, which can be as short as a few days and as long as two months. These longer living B cells cluster in the lymph nodes and clog the lymphatic system. Through karyotyping, which lines up all the chromosomes and compares homologous chromosomes, scientists have observed that chromosomes 14 and 18 appear different in the longer living B cells than they do in the normal living B cells. They concluded that there was a translocation between chromosome 14 and 18. It has also been observed that these B cells with translocations express a protein identified as BCL2 in excess. Follicular lymphoma is a slow progressing cancer and the B cells inside an individual with follicular lymphoma do not divide any faster than normal B cells. Paragraph 2. It was hypothesized that the overexpression of BCL2 might be related to the extended lifespan of these B cells. Normally, B cells are terminated by apoptosis, which is not observed or triggered as quickly in these longer living B cells. To test this, researchers created an antisense phosphorothelate, PS for short, oligodeoxynucleotide of the BCL2 gene and observe cell density over time. When the antisense PS oligodeoxynucleotide was introduced to new colonies of B cells that express BCL2 in excess, a phosphorothelate, a phosphorothelate rather, okay, one more time, phosphorothelate oligodeoxynucleotide is similar to a phosphodiester oligodeoxynucleotide, except an oxygen has been replaced by a sulfur atom. You can view this um, in figure one. So let's take a look at figure one right now. Figure one, a phosphorothelate oligodeoxynucleotide, similar to a phosphodiester oligodeoxynucleotide, except an oxygen um, has been replaced by a sulfur atom, okay? Where we see the phosphate anion. Okay, all right. Paragraph three. To make sure the results from the antisense PS nucleotide experiment were accurate, the researchers also observed colonies of B cells exposed to a BCL2 PS sense strand and colonies of B cells exposed to saline solution. The results are shown in figure two. Let's have a look at figure two. Figure two. Here we see that three separate colonies are grown and their cellular density is measured over the course of eight days. All right. They all start off at the same starting point and the colonies begin to grow up until this point where the antisense phosphorothelate deoxynucleotide colony begins to decline um, down to a point beneath its original cellular density, okay? And then uh, we're on the rise again up until this point. The colonies um, saturated with saline isotonic solution, which is basically like a control. They grow to this point and then they begin their decline, okay? Not a dramatic decline, but a slow, steady decline. And last, we have this colony 
um, that reaches a cellular density all the way up until 5 times 10 to the 6 cells per milliliter. They're saturated in sense phosphorothero-deoxynucleotide. Okay. But then they have a sharp decline between day 4 and day 6. So maybe this is their normal life cycle, four days. And then they reach a less dramatic decline between day six and seven. I mean, between day six and eight. All right. Okay. Which one of the following would be a likely reason for the overexpression of BCL2? Would it be A, a base pair insertion or deletion? resulting in a frame shift that made the BCL2 protein less susceptible to degradation? Would it be B, the translocation of chromosomes 14 and 18 uh, placed the BCL2 gene near a strong promoter? Would it be C, a single pair, a single base pair mutation in the BCL2 gene produce a BCL2 to protein less susceptible to degradation? Or would it be D, the translocation of chromosomes 14 and 18 placed um, the BCL2 gene into the intron of a necessary cellular gene? All right, so you have a lot to choose from. I'll give you a moment to decide. Okay. All right, let's delve into this. Mutations might cause a different type of protein, but a change in um, one base pair that might only alter one amino acid will probably not result in a large presence of uh, BCL2. Okay. Base pair insertions and um, deletions. Generally result in nonsense mutations or incomplete proteins, not overexpression, all right? So this is out as well. Um, and let's see, what should we look at next? Okay, so Introns are removed from pre-RNA during, um, you know, processing. So the BCL2 gene would be partially removed when the cell creates the final mRNA, okay? So that wouldn't upregulate either. So by default, we're left with answer choice B. The translocation of chromosomes 14 and 18 place the BCL2 gene near a strong promoter, okay? The translocation places BCL2 right after um, the promoter for the Ig, that's short for immunoglobulin heavy chain gene. This gene, this heavy chain uh, is upregulated in BCL, in B cells, so as a consequence, in translocated chromosomes, BCL2 is translated more often than normal. So the correct answer choice is answer choice B. What is potentially not a consequence of early stages of follicular lymphoma? Is it A, easy bleeding and bruising? B, lowered immune response? C, enlarged lymph nodes? Or D, fluid buildup around lymph nodes. I'll give you a moment to think. Definitely go back to the text to search for your answer choice if you need to. All right. All right, so um, as mentioned in the passage, follicular lymphoma results in B cells clustering in the lymph nodes. So the lymph nodes become enlarged. The blockage of lymph nodes will reduce the flow of lymphatic fluid and lower the body's natural immunity 
and also cause fluid buildup in the region surrounding the, lymph, the black lymph nodes, okay? EC bleeding and bruising are not primary symptoms of follicular lymphoma. Despite being a blood disorder, bleeding and bruising conditions are ancillary um, symptoms of follicular lymphoma, and they tend to appear with uh, in those with the progress form of the disease, okay? So the correct answer choice is answer choice A. Uh, these are not really the primary consequences of having follicular lymphoma, all right? What is the possible explanation for the results of antisense PS oligodeoxynucleotides observed from day zero to day two, okay? Is it A, the KM value for cellular proteins decreases because of the sulfur? So initially cells uptake fewer uh, PS nucleotides. Is it B, the negative charge on the sulfur makes the nucleotide initially less reactive in intracellular conditions in pH? Is it C, the KM value for cellular proteins increases because of the sulfur? So initially cells uptake fewer PS nucleotides. Or is it D, the sulfur on the nucleotides makes it difficult to enter the nucleus, but after three days, there are insufficient nucleotides in the nucleus to block translation. All right, so you have a lot to choose from. I'll give you a moment to decide, okay? Outside knowledge may be required, but you can kind of um, deduce the correct answer with an extremely limited knowledge of um, enzyme kinetics. All right. Okay, so both phosphorothioate and phosphodiester will have uh, negatively charged atoms in the deoxynucleotide backbone that is sulfur and oxygen respectively because you know they both uh, have the overall negative charge distributed on them. The negative charge therefore will have um, little effect okay in the intracellular conditions. So answer choice um, B is out. All translation of mRNA occurs in the cytoplasm and not the nucleus, okay? Transporter proteins are required to bring molecules from outside of the cell into the cell, all right? So uh, this looks like it's out as well. And the sulfur in the backbone will reduce the affinity for the transporter protein to transport the antisense nucleotide into the cell. So reduced affinity results in an increased KM, where KM is short for the michaelis menten um, constant, and it's the value at which uh, the substrate concentration is half the concentration needed to reach Vmax, okay? All right, so reduced affinity results in increased or higher KM values. The KM will be higher for the sulfur nucleotides because the enzyme is not designed to fit perfectly with a sulfur atom as opposed to an oxygen atom in a phosphodiester. Okay, all right. When working properly, what is the main function of B cells? Is it A, create antibodies, B, destroy virus-infected cells, C, destroy tumor cells, or D, help to assist other white blood cells? I'll give you a moment to decide. This requires um, a little bit of outside knowledge of the immune system. All right. Okay, so there are four main types of um, T cells. You have helper, cytotoxic, memory, and regulatory. 
helper T cells assist other white blood cells um, in activating immune responses. T cells also destroy tumor and virus cells. However, B cells are white blood cells that are responsible for creating the antibodies, okay? All right. What role does the overexpression of BCL2 play in the development of follicular lymphoma? Is it A, BCL2 is a receptor for a growth hormone? Is it B, BCL2 is a transcription regulating protein? Is it C, BCL2 is an apoptotic signaling protein? Or is it D, BCL2 is an anti-apoptotic signaling protein? I'll give you a moment to decide. Definitely refer back to the passage if you need to. All right. Okay, so B cells in follicular lymphoma do not divide any quicker than normal cells, okay? Not a growth hormone. And B cells usually have shorter lifespans, but in follicular lymphoma, they live longer. So this is out, Ancetracy is out as well. BCL2 is considered an anti-apoptotic um, signaling protein because it prevents normal cellular death of B cells by apoptosis, okay? All right. 